ulti to the base. He can be hooking people in lane at level two. He can be getting duo kills in a world where we never see duo kills, or he can be back dooring a cannon, taking him behind enemy lines, and just going straight for the throat there. And he looks so casual. <laughs> I mean, he just, just like solo won a game. And he's just like, yeah, got this. Uh, uh, Rockat, you know, it was a better game from them in game two. It looked more solid. They had a couple of plays, but a shockwave Baron seal, two attempted backdoors before one was finally successful. From Misfits, they just, <laughs> it, it wasn't, it wasn't solid and consistent. It was flashy, a little bit unorthodox and a lot of gambles from time to time, but they just pushed Rockat so far in this game that Rockat finally broke, tried to take the Baron, had no options left to save their base. Misfits coming out with the 2-0. Not quite as close as many would have expected. Look at Pyra, he wants to get in there. Pyra does want to get in there for the I want to know too, there. Pyra. <laughs> <laughs> what went down? What did it sound like? <laughs> Just a glimpse of what's coming soon, but uh, man, Misfits, that that game, um, I think a lot of people are, are going to maybe become Misfits fans after watching just the madness The mid laner ensued. steals a Baron, their top laners backdoors with their legendary support player, their jungler's cacao. Power of Evil's now a little bit, he's like, hey guys, I stole a Baron, I stole a Baron, and Kakao's like, yeah, I did that, Ignaz, like, I won the game, don't worry, we all did something special. <laughs> somehow dilutes the impact of Oriana stealing a Baron, but certainly a massive play Twice. from Mr. I, I think know, in his right? career, is there more? Yeah, I feel no, like there I'm... could be more at this point that I've missed. His next step's twice in one game. That's what you gotta do. <laughs> uh, up the ante for Power of Evil. <laughs> <laughs> one Baron steal with Oriana alt is not enough anymore, ladies and gentlemen. But, <sighs> I mean, so we're, I, I'm obviously very caught in the moment, and as yeah. are you. And there's a lot of things that went wrong for both teams here, but it just doesn't feel like the time for the critical eye because Misfits, I mean, even in the weirdest situations, <laughs> seem to uh, find a way to win. Yeah, they have some weird comfort zone where it, that was more about individual plays a lot of the time. Um, I mean, Hans Sammer getting caught out at the end with no summoners still survives, and the rest of his team just win the game off it is, is a very weird unique dynamic, but I, I think game one showed a little bit more of the team play out of Misfits. Game two showed a little bit more of team play out of Rockat, um, which there are still positives to take away from the game, despite it being a little messy. True, we, we said at the beginning, this is, has to be the game where Maxwell shows up, or we're gonna yeah. have to reevaluate how we feel. And he did show up. He had amazing kicks, amazing setups mm -hmm. to keep the team going. The Tom Kent counterpick was not enough to stop all the pick potential on this team. This looked good for Rockat. Yeah. It was it, not enough to win the game, and. To a certain degree, in the end, that's all that matters. But at the same time, it feels like as we move forward, we can expect more and more from Rockat. Yeah, we, uh, we, it looks like we can. If they can find a little bit of consistency, pick up a couple of wins, there's still a chance. Well, one man who's no stranger to picking up wins is standing by with Pyra <laughs> from the Misfits' cheeky bot lane. Gentlemen, and a great cast on the day. I'm, in fact, joined by two red-hot duo laners, of course. Ignar, Hansama, congratulations on your win, gentlemen. And I want to ask you about that, that final play, delivering Alfari into the back door. What was going on in your mind when you guys made that call? Uh, uh, honestly, we called uh, my ult and bring Alfari. We already called. If they go Baron, we, go, uh, we can end. So three men can block. So we already know the win. Yeah, you executed it almost perfectly. I mean, incredibly well played. But enough about going with your top lane. I want to talk about some bot lane because you guys were on fire. Game number one, so, so clean. And you guys are looking really hot just in general. Uh, I want to ask you to Hans, how do you guys compare in your mind to other bottom lanes in the LCS? Uh, I think compared to other bot lanes in LCS, uh, I would say we are one of the best bot lanes. But uh, for me, I think I need to learn more experience, experience uh, as an AD carry. And Igna has been in an LCK and he's bringing me a lot of stuff. So I think Igna is really good. Absolutely. So uh, Ignar, back to you. You know, you guys have changed out junglers. You used to play with Wisdom. Now you're playing with Kakao. What has that been? How has that been like comparatively in now that you have a new jungler? What is, what is his role now on the team? Uh, Wisdom was a really good jungler. But I think Kakao is more trying to communication with teammates and try to more learn English. So. Communication is different compared to wisdom. 
It seems like it's working well for you guys. So last question over to you, Hans. Looking ahead, you guys have got G2 next, so you've had some experience. How well do you feel you can handle these guys? Uh, I think, obviously, G2 is the best team in Europe, and uh, I faced Sven. I think he's the best AD, and uh, he's a monster. And uh, yeah, I think maybe if we give all our best, maybe we can take them one game at least. And I really, uh, uh, waiting to face them. All right, well, you wanted to wait too long. Thank you for joining me, gentlemen. Congratulations on your 2-0 victory. But that's all the time we got for now because we're going to toss it over to the analyst desk for the post-game lobby.